Welcome back. This is part three of Following God's Heart. We have been talking about David, talking about how following God's heart is the best thing that we can possibly do. And if you are watching this, whether you got here on accident, whether you got sent here on purpose, whatever the reason, I want you to know that God has a purpose in you. Yes, you. Because sometimes we're like, oh, that's for someone else, or I'm not that good enough, or whatever. Well, tell you what, God loves to use what the world rejects, right? In 1 Corinthians 1.27, he says, but God chooses to use the foolish things to shame the wise. He uses the weak to shame the strong, right? So if you think yourself, you're not good enough, perfect candidate right there. So God can use you. And no, again, a great example of this is David. David was a shepherd boy. He was probably in his teens when he was called to the front lines to help his brothers. We all know the story. This is in 1 Samuel 17. You can read it for yourself. I'm gonna just paraphrase it because most of us already know the story. He gets the front lines. He sees Goliath. Everyone's afraid. He's not afraid because he knows who God is. He starts asking questions. His positive words gets to the king. He gets an audience with the king. And then later, he takes up five smooth stones, which is really awesome because when I was younger, I thought, okay, he has five stones. Just in case he misses, he has more ammo. No, Goliath had four brothers. So he wasn't even looking at just Goliath. He was looking at the future battles to come. Super cool, whole sermon in there. Not gonna get into it right now. So he kills Goliath. Then he says something awesome. He says that the whole world is gonna know that our God fights. There is a God in Israel. And 3,000 years later, we are still talking about that example because God did something in David through David to show his glory. And he does the same thing through all of us. And we all have a calling on our life. We all have a purpose in our life. You hear me talking about missions a lot, but because that's who I am. That's what God put inside of me. Whenever you do, whatever it is, whatever you are, if whether you're a doctor or whether you're in sports or whether you're overseas or whether, whether whoever you are or whatever you do, doing what God's plan in your life, wherever you are, is the most fulfilling thing you can possibly do. I'm never more fulfilled than when I'm sitting under a tin roof, sweating in the humidity, languages all around me that are different. I am super thrilled because it's fantastic because that's what God put in my heart. So your mission field can be overseas and not every Christian should go overseas, but it's also in the next classroom. It's also in your workplace. People all around us need to hear the gospel. They need what's inside of you. And yes, sometimes following God's heart is a struggle. It's not easy because we have to do things that we don't want to or we do things that's out of our comfort zone, right? David, I'm sure when he was younger, didn't think about fighting a huge giant multiple times, but he did because he wanted to follow what God's had. And now 3000 years later, we are still talking about it. I don't know about you, but a lot of times, you know, when you are trying to follow God's heart, um, you have a target on the back, right? The devil doesn't like you doing what God wants you to do. And so he'll put doubt, he'll put things on you. Like, you know, I've, again, I've gone overseas quite a handful of times, but almost every time, you know, I always think like, why am I going? There are plenty of other people who are better than me, who are smarter than me, who can speak better than me. Like, why am I going? But God always says, I, you are going because I sent you. And there's a story that I always remember that I'll never forget. Uh, I read it in a book once about a woman who was um, overseas and she was, I believe, a doctor in a third world nation. And um, she was just doing there and there was some kind of plague that was happening and it was killing a ton of people. And so she was going and she was doing her work, but she started to become bitter and hard hearted because all these people that she'd helped, they just died, right? And so she was going home and she later saw this kid on the street and he was like abandoned because he had the sickness. And so she kind of just walked right by, didn't even bother because she's like, he's gonna die just like everyone else is. So what's the point? So she goes home and she later in that night has a vision and the boy dies, he goes to heaven and asks God, why did no one love me? And so she woke up and she, she realized like, what am I doing? I'm here for love. And so she ran out there, found the boy, nursed him back to health. And then later she got him to be healthy again. And he lived. That being said, she was focusing on her own self. She was focusing on her selfishness of just being in her own bubble, right? Well, when we focus on ourselves, we're missing the people who are dying around us. And I remember hearing that. And I remember, I never want to be guilty of some kid never knowing love. I don't care if they know my name. I don't care if they know what nation I'm from. All I care is that they know a man of God was here and that the Father loves me. That's all I care about. And if I'm too focused on myself, I'm too focused on my own problems and being selfish of what I want, then other people are suffering. And it's the same thing for you. You are not on this earth for you. You're on this earth for others. We are servants. Jesus Christ, who is the God of the universe, he created it with his, he spoke it into existence, came down and washed his disciples' feet. And 
he served. And that is what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to be Christ-like. David danced and he danced before the Lord. He lifted up his clothes, which back then, if you, a man throws, shows his thighs, it's kind of you know, unseemly. And he just danced before the Lord. He didn't care. Why? Because he loved God. He was after God's heart. That's how we need to be. We need to be even more undignified than this. So I'm going to say all this to say that are you following God? Just ask yourself. You know, God wants you to go to the next step, next level. So what is he asking you? Is there someone that you need to love? Is there someone that you need to encourage? Is there a sin that you need to overcome? Do you want to rededicate yourself to the Lord? God wants you to be with him. And the reason why he wants to follow his heart is because you never feel more fulfilled than being with him. Because just as water is to a fish and air is to a bird, you are in God's presence. So I'm going to challenge you that in today. I hope that helped. I hope this week of talking about following God's heart encouraged you maybe give you a little spark of inspiration. Read the word, read the scripture. I uh, strongly suggest you reading some of 1 Samuel, at least 17. Great story. See you next time. Be blessed.